What's going on, guys? Welcome to the round one edition of the main event. Uh, my name is Jack, of course, joined by Egg. And uh, wow, what a round one it was. Egg, mate, how are we doing on this fine Tuesday afternoon? Well, I'm back in Brisbane, which is uh, which is good. I've had about five minutes of sleep, so I'm, I'm just running on fumes right now, but I'm here. Um, so I apologize if I, don't, if, I, if I feel a little bit out of it today, but... Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit sleep deprived um, for whatever reason. Yeah, uh, is... my brain just decided, nah, fuck you. We're not sleeping tonight. So yeah, yeah, that's, Do- that's a bit fun. It does yeah. get like that. We are we are doing a bit of a different episode today, of course, with the game being on Sunday, and you were also in Perth with me at the game. Um, you know, a bit of a different one here. I'm here live at the Boom Radio Studios. You're there, comfortable at home. A uh, bit of a different setup this week, but of course, uh, we will be back to uh, the usual programming uh, probably on Sunday. I, I imagine we'll probably do the buy episode on Sunday. <laughs> mm. we'll, yep. uh, we'll, we'll figure that part out later. But uh, yeah, guys, bit of, a lot to unwrap today. Uh, of course, we had the uh, match against Fremantle um, over the weekend on Sunday, and uh, we're going to talk all that and more. Um, but first, before we do get started, I do want to go through some uh, fan feedback that we do receive on our uh, Spotify and uh, all that sort of stuff. So again, go uh, leave us a um, bit of feedback on our Spotify episodes and even a review on Apple Podcasts. And of course, I will read it out on uh, every show. Now, this one here is a bit interesting. This is from uh, Waffair, I think his name is. Um, hard to sort of pronounce that one, so my apologies, mate. But he, he gave us the feedback. Um, thank you for doing this. However... Opening round is stupid, which I, in hindsight, kind of agree with. Um, it is a bit yeah. like doing a pilot followed by episode one. <laughs> so this guy, you know, he doesn't, uh, did not rate us doing a pilot before episode one, but hey man, we're trying to copy the AFL, right? Um, love your work. Yeah. P.S. Dare to beat the bear has to go. It hurts me to hear it. Uh, what do you make of that one, Egg? What do you think of Dare to beat the bear as our song? I like it. This, this person, um... I appreciate their feedback and their patronage, but I respectfully disagree with their um, their taste in music. Yeah, um, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, I agree, mate. I think it's going to stick around. However, if we do get some more feedback, I might end up polling it or something like that. Um, but at the moment, I love the Dare to Beat the Bear. Um, it's sort of just part of the club culture, and it's sort of giving back to our very rich history. Yeah. You know, with the with the Brisbane Bears, and you were you were rocking the Bears over the weekend. Yeah, I had the scarf. Um, Bit out of bit a uh, bit out of position in in Perth. I was thinking of maybe my, my Fitzroy scarf uh, instead because um, you know it makes sense. Fitzroy play, uh, played their last game in Perth before he merges, so you know there's a bit of history there. But yeah, I I'll just back myself in with the Bears. Yeah, exactly, mate. I mean, my old man was at that last uh, game against uh, I think it was uh, Fremantle um, in what was it '96. Mm. Uh, back down at Subiaco I Oval, I believe it was. Um, I can't even remember where the last game was. It might have been even been at the Wacker, but I doubt that. Yeah, and he's got all these old like uh, photos that he took at the game of like the banner and just like all this sort of shit, man. It's actually so cool. I have to send you some of those photos and maybe even share them onto our For page, sure, man. He's got a lot of uh, For sure, man. That'd be cool. He's got a lot of good shit like that, man. A lot of relics. Um, but anyway, let's let's dive into this Fremantle game. There's a lot to get through in this one, man. Um, obviously, a tough loss. We go down uh, ten goals, ten behind seventy to uh, Fremantle's uh, 14-9-93. Uh, not, the, not the greatest performance I've ever seen from our boys. Um, unfortunately for me, you know, living in Perth, um, I'm rather subject to, uh, you know, more of our poorer performances throughout the season. Uh, as we know, you know, uh, the flight to Perth for any team that is sort of uh, past South Australia is sort of one of the toughest trips in the comp. Um, you know, they, they, I know that yeah. they love to say flying up to Brisbane is one of the toughest uh, trips that a team can make, but I think, uh, you know, Flying to Perth is one of the biggest challenges. So I'm, I get subjected to a lot of our uh, poor performances, uh, you know, given the travel as well as, you know, the hostile atmosphere. I mean, what did you make of the atmosphere, man, at uh, your very first Freo game? I was impressed. You know, I, I didn't think it was that hostile. Like, people people seemed pretty chill. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't speak too negatively on Fremantle as a supporter base. My mate, who was there in a West Coast jumper, got a few comments here and there. But other than that, like, <laughs> You know, it was it was pretty okay. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, and you know the loss the loss is um, painful, but you know, like I, I still had a cracking weekend in Perth, um, and I'm not gonna let uh, a fucking football game dampen my spirits in that department. I still like I still had a good time. Still glad I went down. Um, and you know, it's only it's only round round one, round or round two, whatever you want to call it. So still got some time to sort our shit out 
for sure. Yeah, man. There's a lot of time uh, to go. Like everyone is sort of like writing us off already. I mean, alongside Collingwood too. And I, I think that's due to the sheer fact that, you know, people enjoy seeing us like bigger teams, when, not not big clubs, but, you know, uh, the the higher end, higher tier teams sort of fall down. Um, I mean, I understand yeah. that completely because when we were when we, we were down and out a few years ago, you know, I loved seeing uh, the end of the Hawthorne dynasty and things like that. Like I enjoyed seeing teams like that uh, lose. Yeah. And now we're in that position, man. Like it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Like to be on sort of the other side of the fence. And, uh, you know, we went from one of the most beloved teams back in like, you know, 2018, 2019, you know, when we're coming up, everyone was rooting for us. And now a lot of people love seeing our downfall. Um, but I don't think this is a downfall by any stretch of the imagination personally. Um, of course, as we get through the show, we'll be able to, you know, get more in depth into it. Um, but I, I look, man, it's, this is a, uh, it's a, it's a fork in the road. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a road, bu- a road bump here. Um, not a fun one either, but Hey man, like we were never going to win every game of the season as much as I'd like to pretend that we were no. going to. Um, but yeah, man, uh, sort of just starting off here of course. Um, what did you make of that first quarter, dude? Like, you know, we kicked the first four goals of the game, um, you know, to a begrudging uh, Fremantle crowd as well. You know, I don't think they were a fan of some of those calls um, that led to some of those early goals. I know a couple of them were, you know, just from great play and all that sort of stuff. And a couple of them were, you know, admittedly gifted by the umpires. But how were you feeling when we were up, you know, 26 to nothing? We are capable of playing some very good footy, but we just don't sometimes. And that that, that is very frustrating. Um, and, you know, the first quarter started off okay. I still wasn't particularly confident at all um after last week and then yeah lo and behold but but by the time the second quarter was about halfway through um things had kind of died in the ass um we're definitely missing coleman we're definitely missing neil um considering what happened to us in the clearances um we looked flat-footed um at certain points in the game we seem to have a mental breakdown like Zach Bailey giving up his free his um high contact free kick immediately mm-hmm. after receiving his own free kick like just for no reason like it, that's just stupid man like yeah that stuff like that changes momentum like momentum of um a football game and then after that like we didn't really like get on top um and get ourselves back in the game we almost uh managed to come back in the fourth quarter like we kicked a few goals and you know things were starting to turn and then we just um missed two easy set shots and then from there like it was it was done and yeah yeah Um, man very frustrating very out of character and we desperately need a week off to reset and to really figure out where we're going as a footy club like the direction we're taking like um the mental steps we're taking to like get ourselves up for games um because it's just not really there right now yeah like i i would have never expected that i would actually be looking forward to a round two buy of all things um it's come at a very very necessary time for us i'm feeling um it's sort of just one of those things where it's like um look i I feel like like every team sort of needs that reset um, at some stage of the, you know of the season. Um, sometimes it's uh, it's sooner rather than later. And in this case, to be honest with you, like at first I was like you know before the season started, I wasn't too keen on this round two buy because I was like oh like you know we're going to be up and about, we're going to be all good, and then that buy is going to kill our momentum. But man, it's the complete opposite story. Like we don't really have any momentum to begin with. Uh, you know we've had two really really like you know tough losses, like tough pills to swallow. Um, granted, I think. Carlton hurt me way more than losing this game did, to be honest with you, um, which I'll explain for reasons why later. Um, But it's just like, I guess just the way it's sort of, uh, you know, going down this season, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not the same uh, Brisbane Lions from last year at this point in the season. And I guess the buy, you know, I'm hoping does does us a bit of good. It gives Lockie Neal, uh, you know, that time to recover without having to, you know, get pushed into a game. Because I imagine if we had a game this weekend, Fags would be doing everything imaginable to make sure Lockie Neal would be playing that game, given that we got, you know, just pummeled in the clearances. I mean, uh, the, the, the stats sheet says uh, the 41 clearances to 34, which actually isn't too, like, not that much, especially considering we didn't have, again, we didn't have Lockie Neal. We don't have, we still don't have Will Ashcroft. You know, our midfield was, um, you know, it was lackluster compared to uh, what Fremantle was in. And Fremantle genuinely has a very good midfield. You know, you've got Brayshaw, Sarong, uh, Luke Jackson, and obviously Sean Darcy when he comes back in. But that's a really, like, I feel like I'm forgetting someone there, but a really good midfield, man. And um, I think... All things considered, uh, that I didn't realize how close the clearances actually was, but that was where the game was uh, won for Fremantle, man, because you know they, a lot of their goals came straight out of the middle, uh, you know, just straight out of that center bounce back into their forward fifty, 
and um, a lot of stuff like that, dude. So it's um, we are missing Lockie Neal dearly. And man, don't get me started on Kitty Coleman, man. Kitty Coleman would have been absolutely electric on Sunday had he been there down back. That would have, would have got a lot of action down there. And not to mention, man, my fantasy team suffering as a result of uh, Kitty going out because he was an elite midfielder I, I uh, drafted. And I've had to take him out, unfortunately. But um, yeah, maybe we could do a whole thing about fantasy soon. But no one wants to hear about my fantasy team. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, it was a it, it was a tough watch after a while, man. And as you said, you know, Zach Bailey sort of, um, you know, a momentum killing free kick right there. Um, it just it's painful. And I guess as well, just being there in person as well just sort of makes it all that much more um, stressful. But at the end of the day, dude, it, it is round one. The barn is not on fire yet. Um, I think we've still got plenty of work to do um, to get back to where we were uh, with our form last year. But that being said, it's sort of all part of the journey. It's a really, really long season. And man, honestly, I'm feeling optimistic. Like, how are you feeling about everything sort of uh, two days later? I I agree with everything you say. Um, with the season being really long and the uh, barn not being on fire yet, it um it's tricky for me because like it's not, panning out to be the best season with our injuries. Kitty Coleman's going out with an ACL. Lockie Neal's injured. Connor McKenna um, having his troubles. Uh, we'll get to the injury list a bit more with depth in a minute. But, like, it's it's there's a lot working against us. And, like, it's not – it's going to be – it'll be a successful season still. I think, I, think, I think we'll still play finals at the bare minimum. But, 100%, like, yeah. It's going to be a mental game – from here on out and a test of our mental toughness to see what we can do to get ourselves back in a position to succeed um, like we were last year. Yeah, man, exactly right. It's, um, I guess it's like a case of, like you can you can say I'm coping here, but it's like I look at teams like GWS, man. They started four and twelve last year. Carlton had that really rough patch where they were what like fourteenth in round sixteen or something stupid, and they you know they made it to a prelim. Um, dude, anything can happen in footy. Anything can happen in this league. And it's sort of a case of like, we just need to sort of, you know, be patient. It is going to be a bit of a tough season. Uh, you know, a lot of ebbs and flows to it. Um, but hey, this is the reality of it, man. We got no Will Ashcroft. Uh, Duda isn't quite back in yet. Obviously, we had no Neil on the weekend. No Coleman is fucking painful. Um, but hey, man, like it's not all doom and gloom like a lot of people are like saying it is. Um, you know, being in Perth, I'm surrounded by a lot of Freo supporters. And they're sort of all on the um, on the case that, you know, we're done our, you know, our premiership windows closed and it's just like no 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 not at all like it's it's a long season there's so much time and there's a lot of variables that are currently not in our favor unfortunately but that's that's what happens in a in a season of footy man like you know we and as fag said in the press conference uh you know we've been in this position before man like we started what one and three uh, a couple of seasons ago and ended up making it to the prelim um you know you can have slow starts granted it's not my preferable way of going about it but it, it does happen man um but yeah, I guess just sort of losing in the fashion we have has been rather concerning. There was a uh, stat that has come out. Uh, it's not even hasn't even come out. Like you could sort of just see it from looking at the last two games we've played. But uh, you know we've had uh, eight plus goals scored on us uh, consecutively in now two games in a row. So obviously eight goals straight against us, which is a massive, massive concern. Um, and that just sort of shows the importance of Kitty Coleman. Man, he's gonna he's gonna really we're gonna really miss him this year, man. It's. Uh, that's what another tough pill for us to swallow, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, yeah, I don't know really what they do to cover him at this point. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one. I don't envy. I don't envy the um, selectors at all. No, nah, club. Not at all. Not, it's no small feat at all. No, nah, it's a it's a tough job, man. And like out of our defenders, dude. Like, who do you really think steps up in Kitty's place? Because Look, the, the plus side of the coin here, if I'm going to be optimistic, is this gives someone in our back line the opportunity to really step up and, be, you know, potentially become their own, you know, just into their own sort of potential. Um, do you have any idea on who that could be? Uh, uh, maybe Duda when he comes back in. But again, like that depends on how, um, like what his form is coming back from his ACL. Yeah. Um, I know they're trying to get him to come back for the Collingwood game, but... I, I don't know, man. It's it's fucking tough. Like Coleman's a, you don't replace Coleman. No. Um, yeah. Coleman is a one on one, uh, one of one. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for us, when he's healthy. Um, but unfortunately, with him out and uh, we'll be out for the rest of the season, it is uh, it's a really tough one to sort of replace. I don't think personally for me, I just don't think we're going to be able to replace him. I think it's going to be sort of a team effort down back. Of course, you know, you got Harris Andrews, big chief, the brick wall. 
down there alongside his right hand man uh, Jack Payne for when Jack comes back into the squad. But until then, man, it's just I think the the rest of the backmen they're going to have to like you know just team up and sort of you know fill that hole that uh, Kitty is going to replace because he had such a such a massive role in our backline and it's. And it's actually like, it's not until really recently that we've been able to sort of uh, see this from Kitty. I don't want to ramble on about Kitty too much. I'm just missing him a lot. Um, and I just, you know, just hope his recovery goes all good, man. Because this is, uh, it's sad stuff. And we just dearly missed him on the weekend. And it's not the last time we're going to be, you know, missing him this season. Um, but I do, you know what? I do want to give my flowers real quick now. So in this game, you know, while we did while we did suffer a loss, dude, we actually got to see one of the all-time performances by Fremantle docker, uh, Caleb Sarong, dude. Like, have you had a chance to look at his his, his stats? Like, it's insane. I've seen some crazy stuff, yeah, coming out of the game, and um, yeah, just just how fucking lucky he does it against us, man. Typical, like, eh? Like, forty six yeah. disposals, dude. Like, I've have never seen Caleb Sarong play like that in my life, and it's just he's an absolute animal, mate. He's a animal, and you know, I wish. I wish him all the best and uh, good on you, Frio, for, you know, keeping him around and, uh, you know, just, fuck, just having him, man. I'm jealous as fuck, um, especially right now. But at the end of the day, man, we got we still got Lockie Neal, man. Lockie fucking Neal. So, um, yeah, dude, a uh, bit of a tough game, man. Tough game. There's a lot to sort of, you know, break down. I don't even know where to start here, man. Like, so, um, obviously, we're up in the first quarter, you know, 26 to nothing. Kick the first four straight. I was feeling pretty confident at that point. Um but I also knew in the back of my mind as well that we can, you know, drop that at any stage. Uh, you know, we did it last uh, the week before against Carlton, which was much, much worse. Um, but, you know, to get up like that as well um, and to actually see Frio respond the way they do, that's pretty impressive by them. And if I'm one of their fans, I'd be pretty proud because, you know, usually historically over the past few years, if Fremantle, you know, gets a lead on them like that, usually they break down and sort of just can't get back to there. But the fact is... Uh, They've turned it all around, you know, against a really, pr a really quality club. Like, you know, I don't want to, you know, hype us up too much and, you know, say that use those words about our team, but it's the truth, man. We are one of the, um, you know, the top shelf clubs at the comp right now. And for Frio to sort of turn around and be like, no, nah, fuck that. We're not doing, we're not dealing with that. We're, you know, we're here to play, you know, despite being 26 points down in the first quarter. That's pretty impressive by them. Um, I'm not sold on them yet. Um, I do definitely think there's a lot of work for them to do. And I sort of... I don't like to say this either, but I do truly believe we sort of lost to ourselves in this instance. Um, you know, I'll give credit where credit is due, but a big part in us losing was just, you know, there's a lot of variables, just not in our favor, just both both behind the scenes and a bit on field. Like, I don't know if there's like some attitude problems going on there. Um, how are you sort of making, uh, what do you make of Freo after that first game? Do you think this is this could be a one-hit wonder or do you think they actually um, might be carrying their, their 22, 2022 form into 2024? I think they're definitely carrying their form from 2022, especially after that, especially after um, putting up those numbers that they put up on us. Um, in terms of like a mental problem, I think there's definitely like an attitude problem for sure. Um, I think Lockie Neal's comments after the Carlton game were perfect. That's exactly what we need. Um, yeah. I wish we'd see more of that from Harris and from Fagan. Mm. I know that's not how they roll necessarily. And I know that's how, like that's part of how they've gotten us to where they've gotten us but at the same time like you got to put your foot down and like call a spade a spade you know yeah absolutely mate it's um you just got to say it how it is man and that's just the with a sort of like fags has got to be straight shooters with these guys you know they've they've come up all together you know from the from their draft days um you know we, we are carrying a lot of players that we did draft and you know one club players so far and you know that they, they know what it's like to be you know fucking finishing 16th they know what it's like to be getting smacked by 130 points and you know it is very um I totally understand if there is an attitude problem in there, just given the, um, not that I accept it, but given the uh, the rise that this team has had and consistently uh, consistently good, uh, reasonably good success as well in that period. Um, I totally understand if it's sort of getting to a point where they're just sort of not taking two teams too seriously. Like I know when we lost to Port by 56 points last year, you know, Dane Zorko went on to um, Mitch Robinson's point, uh, podcast last year and basically said that the team was, you know, smelling their own shit a little bit. And I just don't want that to become a really bad habit. I know we sort of uh, see our team at some points, you know, get complacent on the field, especially when we've got big leads. Um, and it, it, could, it could all be a case like that, man. And it's up to Fags to really just pull everyone in line. It's up to Harris as well to pull everyone in line, Lockie as well, you know, and just say, hey, man, like, yeah, we're a great team, but that doesn't mean it's a fucking cakewalk to a premiership at all. Um, you know, we've seen lots of great teams fall. Um, a lot of great teams not even make the finals, and I just hope that we're not one of them, and I really hope we can make it back to the promised land at the end of September. But right now, after that game, super deflating stuff, and it really makes it hard to sort of, uh, you know, have a lot of faith in my team. Um, but at the end of the day, 
I'm still gonna have faith, man, because I'm loyal. I think I'm having a fire drill. Can you hear that? I can't. No. What, what the yeah. fuck? I think yeah, the fire alarm's going off. Um, <laughs> give me a second. I'm going to pause all this and see what's going on. Sorry about that, guys. If there was a uh, bit of an interruption there in the recording, I just got called out for a fire drill, as you could hear me say at the end of that uh, first little first little part there. But we were just wrapping up the Fremantle game there anyway, so uh, I think we will move on to uh, our injury list because we've had a bit of news. And thank you, of course, uh, Egg for waiting around for all that. That was a bit uh, a bit how you going, but hey, man, we we ball. All good, man. We we thugging yeah, it out. Bro. So, um, a bit of unfortunate news came out of this game as well. So, you know, uh, Fremantle aren't the ones wearing all the wounds from Sunday's game, of course. Uh, news just come out that uh, our defender, our beloved Irishman, Connor McKenna, will be sidelined for four weeks with a hamstring injury, uh, which was suffered during the final quarter of our um, of the game to Frio. So, uh, mate, this is this sucks. <laughs> what do you make of uh, losing Connor McKenna this early in the season, man? He, I think he's been pretty, pretty important to us over the past year since he's been at the club. And, um, yeah, just another sort of kick to the balls here. It's definitely concerning um, with McKenna. It's definitely heartbreaking. Luckily, he is coming back. He's not like another fucking Coleman. Yeah. I think maybe give him another week just to be safe because we do have Tom Duda coming back uh, in about a week or two for Collingwood. So that should keep things good uh, for for a little bit until he comes back. And Darcy Gardner was out as well for a few weeks with a potential PCL, um, which sucks, I feel, for him. I'm not as concerned with him because we do have Jack Payne um, who's right there, ready to go. He just got dropped for form, which is a shame. Um, but like, he's probably the best course. He's probably the best option um, coming out of, out of the, out of the Fremantle game. Um, I don't care if he's out for form or whatever. Like we need to bring him back in for God's sake. Um, yeah. I don't think he should have been out to begin with. I think I thought he was a bit stiff, but um at the end of the day he wasn't um luckily luckily we have them we have him there luckily we have Dude there and then once Connor McKenna comes back we should be okay backline wise um Coleman's obviously you can't replace him but like that's going to be as good as it gets I think for a Coleman uh with a bat for a backline with no Coleman yeah man it's uh yeah it's, it's tough that the defense just sort of keeps taking these hits. Um, of course, because we had Darcy Gardner as well. Uh, you know, out with an injury, he's awaiting results at the moment. Um, and the club will provide an update when that's confirmed. I hope that's not too long, man, because uh, you know Gardner is actually a sort of like you know he went through that sort of weird patch for like probably you know a season and a half or so where he just sort of wasn't you know where he's been. But I feel like Gardner sort of you know stepped back up and he's been putting on some really good performances for us. Um, you know, uh, just individual sort of performance in terms of like, you know, just the, the work he does and all that sort of stuff down back. So it's just, yeah, it's a, it, it just, it's a bit of a hit there, man. Um, what do you make of sort of the Gardner situation too? I mean, it's it's no fun having our back line just sort of go down, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's what happens in footy, right? It is, yeah. Um, shit happens. Uh, this year we seem to be getting the injury bug, which is a shame. Yeah. 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 Um, you just got to work your way through it and get to the end of the year, uh, see where you, see where we end up in terms of finals, and then just make a run at it and see how far we can go. Yeah, man, exactly. Like, look, let's be real. We've been so like, you know, for for the majority of this uh, time that we've sort of uh, had a reasonable success, we have uh, genuinely had a very good run with injuries. You know, um, it's especially compared to other clubs. You know, you look at some of the other clubs and the struggles they've had with injuries uh, while we've been up and about. And we've always been so grateful of our of our medical team and, um, you know, the, the doctors and physios we've got at the club who have, by the way, still done absolute miracles and godsends on our players. And, um, you know, I just hope that that can uh, sort of continue as well. You know, the, the, it's definitely a test um, for the team uh, to have to have so many sort of key players and important players, you know, sort of go down in such a short time. You know, like obviously Ashcroft's the big one, but then, you know, even just more recently, you know, just Neil and, you know, now McKenna and, uh, you know, Gardner as well. And it's just... It's a bit, bit tough, man, but that's what happens in footy. But uh, yeah, we won't bang on about the injuries too much longer. It is pretty depressing there. Um, but up next, I do have a sort of a topic here that I know you hold close to your heart being a Brisbane man and actually living in the city uh, as the uh, Brisbane uh, the Brisbane Olympic Stadium. Um, the Brisbane Olympics call with no new stadium and the, the Gabba um, is pretty much staying the way it is. So what, what do you make of all this, man? I know you were pretty pissed off on your Instagram story yesterday, so I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on all of this stuff. If you thought my Instagram story was bad, you should have seen my Twitter. <laughs> I haven't um, seen your Twitter yet, man. I was, I was more angry about the um, news regarding the stadium than I was the actual loss to Fremantle. If I'm being honest with you, yeah, um, that is outrageous. Like, 
going from Los Angeles Olympics in 2028 with some of the most beautiful facilities in the world to mm. fucking shithole in the middle of a bush with temporary scaffolding seating for our um, track and field is going to be is just make our city look like a laughing stock and it's all thanks to a bunch of people who quite frankly aren't going to even be alive when the olympics actually happen so yeah it doesn't make a lot of sense to me i hope to god the um government that comes in when the aop inevitably get voted out after this bullshit in october i hope they do something to stop this but um yeah i'm very disenfranchised very dis disillusioned as a uh person who's lived in brisbane their whole life and is very proud to be a queenslander um i'm very annoyed very pissed off this is our chance to become like a sydney 2000 situation yeah but we've just squandered it thanks to a bunch of well i'm not going to repeat the word of on on air on air but yeah the, the, I, I wouldn't trust these politicians to babysit my goldfish let alone run a state yeah, dude, it's, uh, you hit the nail on the head when it's like, it's always these old fucks that are going to be dead by the time all these decisions sort of come to fruition, um, you know, become a thing. Like, they're not going to be around to see it. Like, they just, I feel like these guys, they just get so like, and it's not just in footy as well, but just politicians in general, man, they just make decisions knowing it's going to set the fucking world on fire and they're not even going to be around to like sort of see it all go down. Um, yeah, I, I personally, like, you know, me and Perth, like, don't really have too much to comment on it outside of how it was going to affect the Lions. Um, I haven't been too clued into all of this, uh, to be honest with you. But I did, I was excited at the prospect of, you know, the Lions potentially having a brand new, like, flashy, you know, home ground, you know, big upgrade to the Gabba. Like, that was such an exciting idea for us. And um, even more so, like, I was so stoked to hear that we weren't going to have to give up the Gabba in the meantime either, like, when that sort of uh, change, the shift in the plan changed, because I... I don't know, I had a hard time sort of computing in my brain that we were going to lose the Gabba, uh, especially in the next, what was it, we were going to end up, what, was it two more seasons before we were going to lose the Gabba? Like, we probably still would have Pretty much, been yeah. up and about by that point, you know? Um, like, I was I was happy that we weren't going to lose the Gabba and we're still going to get the new stadium, but now we're not getting either, and it's, yeah, it's it sucks, dude. And, like, yeah, I just feel for you, man, because, you know, you're a proud Queenslander, you know, you're a Brisbane man through and through, and I guess it's just, uh, this would have put the city on the map, especially in Australia, um, you know, because it's just... Fuck, man. Just fucking politicians, dude. I know uh, this is an issue that you really uh, felt strongly about, so it's just something I definitely want to touch on. Um, I don't think either of us are experts here, but I know your uh, your opinion here held a bit of weight. Uh, you know, you, you live in the city, man. Um, would have been awesome for the yep. city, you know, awesome for the, the you know the citizens of Brisbane, you know, to be able to, you know, see their new stadium, and especially have the Olympics there, because, you know, the Olympics is the, probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, you know, sporting event in uh, the world, probably next, in my opinion, next to the FIFA World Cup. And uh, just to be able to have that in Australia, and let alone a city like Brisbane, man, that was fucking, that's massive news for you guys. And just to have your own government sort of just shit it, shit the bed on it, um, it's just really disappointing, man. I do hope that they can, you know, find a, I don't know, is it, is it too late for them to even change their minds on this? Like, is there, a, is there still time for them to be able to, you know, potentially find a new location for a whole new stadium and bring that back on? Or is it just totally fucked? I think we're just about to run out of time. There's still just enough time to like fix this, but like I don't know if there's going to be enough time to like actually like get the get, fuck off this current government and get a new government and whether or not they actually want to do anything themselves um, is another story to begin with. But yeah, I don't know. I think we're just about to run out of time mm. before this, this kind of dies in the ass. Yeah, it's super disappointing, man. Like, uh, you know, it's just to think that they're going to have the opening and closing ceremony at uh, what, like a square stadium is kind of weird. Um, it's always at a track and field sort of, a, you know, an oval stadium. That's how it's always been, you know, in most countries. And it's just, I don't know, to be honest, it's not even just like typical. It's just typical Australia managing managing to fuck something like this up. Um Really disappointing stuff, man. I do hope that they can um, figure this out because, yeah, like, not just, obviously, not just having the Olympics in Brisbane, but a whole new flashy home for our boys, you know, a great, a great, like, you know, facilities and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I can't comment too much more because I've never been at the Gabba, but I'm sure you can fucking, you know, vouch for, you know, how some of the facilities may feel. Um, like, do you, comparing, say, Optus to the Gabba, is there a sort of a big contrast in sort of the quality there or is it not too much different? Absolutely, yeah. Optus Optus clears it by a country fucking mile. Like, yeah, it's not even close. Um, yeah, it's gonna feel it's gonna feel weird. Get it's gonna feel weird going back to the Gabba after uh, a game at Optus. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I imagine that it's gonna be a bit weird. We'll definitely touch on that once we are, uh, you know, get to our next home game and you know do the review on that one. I'm definitely keen to sort of hear your comparisons there. 
Um, quite, it's very interesting, especially I've never been to the Gabba. I've just heard, you know, it's very run down and all that sort of stuff, which is disappointing, man. Cause you know, that's, that's my, that's my club's home ground, man. Like that's, you know, that's my team right there. That's out. That's my home ground. And, um, yeah, I just, I would love to see it sort of, you know, just get the refresher that it needs. And, um, I thought the stadium would have been the answer, man. Like imagine Brisbane Olympic stadium, man, like the, Bri- the home of the Brisbane Lions. Like that would have been fucking wicked, but it is what it is, bro. We're not politicians, so there's not much we can really do except, you know, give our opinion on it. And, um, yeah, really disappointing stuff there. Uh, but getting back to the footy, man, uh, the bye. Now, we play the bye this weekend, and I still think we'll find a way to lose that. But, hey, uh, how do you normally spend your bye round? Like, do you watch other teams? Um, yeah, what do you do for your bye round, man? Well, my YouTube kind of facilitates. I watch <laughs> this is I, true, I still actually. watch the game and can carry on <laughs> yeah. um, business as usual in that department. But, yeah, I, um, it's a relief not having to worry about fucking Brisbane for for one week yeah for me personally especially now when, when we're kind of trash mm. um but yeah it's kind of business as usual for me um trying to like absorb as much shit that i can put into videos and um uh stuff in that regard especially like um if i'm trying to do like live streams and stuff like that um my i'm, I'm pretty much yeah business as usual man yeah nice sure. Yeah, good. It's uh, it is nice to be able to watch the footy without like knowing, you know, the, either the stress of our game coming up or the depression or whatever of the game the night before. I mean, look at me talking like this. You know, I'm I'm assuming here we're going to be depressed, but that's not the case at all, man. We've had some great times, um, you know, the past few years. So maybe I shouldn't use that word, but you know, we we don't have the pressure of you know having to watch our team play that weekend. So I do see the um. Do see do do see the appeal in the buy round, especially for us right at this very moment in this part of the season where we're not doing so great. Um, so you know, but at the, on the plus side of it, that is a opportunity for our club to really just put some work in this week. You know, get those injuries uh, to particularly Lockie Neal sorted, test two day out, and uh, see from there. Like, uh, do you like having buys part of the season? I mean, I I sure do. I've sort of explained that in my um just in my answer there. Do you do you enjoy having the buy? I do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's weird having it in round two, but I think in in this case, it definitely benefits us. Um, yeah. Again, with our form and injuries and stuff like that. Um, but I do I do enjoy buys during the um during the year it's less work less workload for me uh because there's less games to cover yeah um and yeah it, it can it can help especially when it's um uh something sh- some shit like a all all team buy or something like that like it's it's definitely like good to have a week off in that department yeah, man, it's uh, it's very good to have the uh, the week off there. I used to when I was younger, I was very much against the sort of the buy because it's just I uh, back as a kid, man, I didn't really understand it when the, you know they first introduced. I think we've had these buys going for a fair few years now, uh, probably over a decade at this point. I'd have to go back and do my research, but I just remember sort of you know as a kid not being too much of a fan of it, but you know as an adult in me uh, and knowing you know how life sort of operates and how these footy teams and their schedules must work, uh, dude, it's welcome for every team. Uh, you know, every team does need a break. It's a long season, dude, and it's super physically demanding to you know be a, an AFL professional Aussie rules player man so it's sort of just one of those uh cases of hey like it's something that's so necessary at this point and especially you know with it being such a long season teams not wanting to lose players to injury whether that is just due to uh you know uh, overplaying or um just anything like that a buy is very good and plus the you know the, the boys get the opportunity to go spend a weekend with their families and you just unwind and disconnect from footy for just a couple of days um and it's good to hit the refresh button man it is good for everyone um and you know i just i uh, couldn't come at a better time, if you ask me. Um, yeah, the buy is uh, the buy is definitely something I approve of as a uh, as a someone who's a bit more wise than uh, my fourteen year old self. But um, yeah, man, we'll uh, we'll get into the main event of the week here now. Obviously, this was a bit of a tough one to pick, but believe it or not, there were still a few players who, sh- who we believe showed up. So, Eggman, who was your main event of the week? So I had Joe Danaher. I'm go- I'm going with the. Um pick from the lines themselves and i know i know that might be a bit um cheap for some people but i i, I just agree with it he yeah. uh kind of brought him and eric hipwood as well for that matter mm. um, i thought they did very well. um yeah like uh, so it's not all doom and gloom like there are still things that are going well there are still things that are that are improving um we just need to like sort some key shit out and we we could be doing good again you know no absolutely like i i have no doubts in my mind we're sort of going to be up and about you know in the next uh, few weeks fingers crossed hopefully um it's just obviously as i've said a few times on the show a lot of variables not going our way but a variable that is going our way is joe danaher you know actually playing consistently pretty decent um you know this is probably 
Um, this Freo game was definitely a step on his a step up on his Carlton game, and he still played pretty okay against Carlton, man. So um, yeah, it's a good choice there. Uh, for me, definitely Harris Andrews. I think just um, maybe mm. it might have just been the view of where we were sitting, but he was just everywhere, you know. Um, when the when the ball was yeah for sure when man. we were sitting sort of on like a backline side, uh, you know, the amount of times you and I must have sat there and just screamed "Big Chief!" like it's just a uh, a telling of his performance, man. Like uh, Andrews got me excited, man. He was hitting those packs hard. He was you know marking the big marks again, like you know, especially after his uh, his performance against Carlton, he was dropping a lot of just like sitters. And uh, it's good to see that he's, you know, nipped that in the bud. He's serious and he's, um, you know, out to sort of just make a statement and make up for that performance before. I also just wanted to shout out Jared Lyons as well. I know that we, um, I know Jared Lyons has had a rather quiet last couple of seasons as well, but I thought he actually played really well. Um, you know, I wasn't, you know, too keen on actually seeing him play uh, the Freo game just due to sheer, like his past form and stuff like that. But man, he's uh, definitely making me eat my words a little bit here and um, taking such a heavy hit to the head as well, going off the blood rule in like the thir- first 30 seconds or so of the game, coming back on strapped up. Like, he was everywhere, man. Like I was really impressed with his effort. And um, yeah, man, he gets my runner up here. I didn't actually, I was going to put him on here, but uh, man, Harris just sort of made a statement this week, man. Man, it was awesome stuff to see. Um yeah, those are our main events of the week here. I'm not really keeping a tally on them, to be honest with you. I probably should, considering it's you know certainly our second one, so I probably could, and then maybe give out some sort of fucking like I don't know award at the end of the year to a, a player that's never going to see or receive the award, but a little something for us to maybe do and keep track of. Um, getting away from the Lions though, and getting away from uh, the weekend's game against Fremantle. Now, some really exciting news has come out in the AFL with the Tasmanian Devils uh, obviously being announced uh, last year, but now they've had their identity revealed. And um, man, it's 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 not bad, man. Like I I'm a bit I'm a massive fan of the colours. The logo is a bit eh, you know, as a, from a graphic designer perspective, um, it's not the worst logo on the AFL by any stretch of the imagination. But it's just I think they could have done a bit more or at least something a little bit different. Um, the jumper is the thing I have the real problem with, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Tassie Devils and their their big reveal yesterday. Yeah, it's it's exciting times for the Gabba. Oh, fuck, for the Gabba, pardon <laughs> the me, for the, for the league, um, for sure. And it's good that they're able to like get it on track and get it going. Um, I'm not too, uh, not too worried about the logo and the uniform per se. Like yeah. the... They're, they're, that's like a pre-existing uniform that's already recognizable mm. um and at the moment like i noticed that they're gonna change it at some point but like for now like that's a pre-existing uniform used at state level so i think it, it's at, at the moment it's still like a good choice um from a recognizability standpoint yeah um and yeah i'm just i'm just stoked for them and stoked that they're doing so well already and that they seem to be off to a um a really good start hopefully it turns out hopefully hopefully things end up uh quicker than say a gold coast or a gws i have faith that will man like you know tassie's a massive uh massive football state uh you know the the, the guys in tasmania absolutely well not the guys but just everyone in tasmania loves afl you know we've had so much good afl like players come out of there um you know people don't realize that the league is full of tasmanians man like really talented uh state down there and to be honest this is something that probably should have happened 30 years ago if you ask me um, yeah, again, massive fan of the colors for those that are somehow not in the loop They're, it's green, red, and yellow. If you want to get really, really technical with it, it's Myrtle, Rose and Primrose. Uh, it's colors there. Like, look, I'm a, I'm a big, I'm big on like the sports design and colors and all that sort of stuff and logos like, and jumpers. Like I've got, I fucking have my own design page about like just making jerseys and sport designs and rebrands and all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's like, I, I sort of nitpick this sort of shit, but I'm just so happy someone's actually using green. Like, it's such a unused color in the AFL. Like, obviously, Fremantle did for a few years there. And to be honest with you, I still don't know why they've ditched the uh, the purple, yellow, uh, purple, red, and green color scheme. Um, I get it. It's not for everyone. Um, but I really enjoyed yeah. those them having those colors in the anchor and all that sort of stuff. But um, each to their own there. I'm just sort of happy, yeah, someone's using this green. And it's a pretty clean green, too. Um, yeah, as you said, really happy that they're sort of, you know, they're, they're really successful so far by the look of them. I and mean, fuck me, 80K members so far. That's more than us. It's more than a lot of teams mm-hmm. in the comp, which is fucking insane to think about, especially for a team that has not played a game yet. Uh, are you going to buy a foundation yeah. membership? Probably not. I considered it, but like I don't have any affiliations to Tasmania. I've never lived in Tasmania. I don't have any family who lives in Tasmania. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really make sense for me. Um, it would be cool as like a novelty thing, but like I, I, I don't really need it. So yeah. um, I might pass on that. Yeah, it's just... 
It's sort of just one of those things. Like, I mean, I'm buying one, but it's for radio purposes personally. Like, we're doing a whole thing on um on the warm up, which is a show we do here at Boom Radio uh, every Thursday night, seven till ten. Quick plug there, uh, where we just um pretty much talk sport. But yeah, we're doing a whole thing with Tazzy. Like, uh, we've got one of the boys going to gather around. Um, who, by the way, is keen to meet you, and he is um, what we're doing is. <laughs> We're going to make the Tazzy Club song like this week and then he's going to take it uh, to gather around and try. This is the whole story arc behind. He's going to try convince um, the CEO to uh, make it their club song. Obviously, it's not going to go well because it's going to be a fucking shocking song, but um, that's the whole fun of it, man. Like, uh, New teams really excite me, dude. And of course, uh, this brings the teams to 19, so which means we probably need a 20th team, unfortunately. I don't really like the idea of us having 20 teams in the comp. If you ask me, let's keep it simple. Let's. Um, I would love for us to uh, split. I wouldn't love it because it's so like I'm so used to it now. It's so divisive. It's such a divisive topic in the Lions in uh, Lions uh, community. But this would be sort of a situation. Where I'm just like, hey, uh, you mind uh, giving us back Fitzroy? Be me being a Fitzroy man. Uh, that's what my selfish my selfish self wants. But yeah, we're, we're looking. We're staring down the barrel of the potential of a twentieth team just for the sake of uh, evening it out. So. I guess the question I've got for you is where would you have this 20th team? Uh, there are a few safe bets, like maybe a third WA team or a third South Australian team. I don't know how it would work in terms of rivalries. I think they should try and do another expansion team in maybe Northern Territory. Mm. Um, that makes the most sense for me personally. Like I know weather's, weather's a factor, but you know there, there are ways to get around that for yeah. sure. Um, I think Northern Territory is the best option if you want to make it a fully national competition. Absolutely, dude. Like that's... My first choice is the Northern Territory. I understand there's a lot of uh, complicated logistics that go with it, you know, from the weather, uh, you know, the, the culture, uh, the culture stuff as well. Like I know that it's very uh, touchy as well over there, but I do think, you know, if you want to make it a real national competition, Northern Territory would be your go-to, maybe a Darwin team or something like that. They probably need an indoor stadium uh, if you're going to do go down that route. Um, I'm all for I'm all for a Northern Territory team, man. Like, let's make it proper, proper national, and you know, give the Northern t- uh, Territory proper representation it needs to because just like tasmania look at how many talented players come from you know the northern territory you know or the tiwi islands all that sort of stuff it's um they deserve it dude they totally deserve it um but i do also understand why we haven't gone down that route yet in terms of a third perf team it's funny like it's heavily rumored that my area up in junilop would be the third wa team but i would be lions through and through if that was the case um you would never you're never you're never gonna take me away from this club mate uh, i'll tell you that right now it's yeah, a, um it's so embedded into my family. And I guess if like we had a third WA team, it'd be cool and all, but I think it sort of fucks up the whole dynamic between the Eagles and the Dockers. Um, Cause when both teams are up and about, that's one of the best rivalries in the whole competition. If you're in my opinion, as someone who's lived over here, the passion is just unbelievable. And if you throw a third team in there, it could be a little bit awkward, uh, you know, but I look, my vote goes to the Northern territory on that one, man. Um, absolutely. Uh, but moving on a little bit here. So, I just want to talk about just the season so far, man. You know, we're, we're two, technically two rounds in. Uh, what do you make of the season so far, dude? Like, what's been, you know, just let's chat some footy, man. Like, what's been some of your highlights from the season already or what, what's been some stuff that's caught your attention or just whatever the fuck's on your mind, man? What, what, what's going on? Uh, it's been a really weird start to the season. I think I'd like to see us get back to like a standard um, round round one next year. Um I think it's also it's also been cool to see teams like GWS and Carlton and um, Sydney sort of rise up and cement themselves as uh, potential contenders this year, um, and uh, teams like Gold Coast as well. Um, it's a re- it's a really even competition. Like it's going to be really hard to win a, win a game in this league this year. And I'm not saying Brisbane's going to go winless, obviously, mm. but like you know, it's going to be it's going to be fucking hard. You know. Mm. Um, and it's up to us to rise to that and to respond as a footy club. Um, and yeah, like it's, it's, it's been, it's been weird. Um, I think by round four, when Gavaround comes and goes, it'll be back to normal pretty much. But yeah, it's been, it's been strange, but still I'm glad footy's back. Definitely. Yeah, man. I love footy being back. It's sort of just like, it was one of the bigger things I was thinking of on uh, Sunday. We're at the game. It was just like, um, 
yes, we are getting our asses kicked in. You know, we're getting our shit kicked in here. But at the same time, fuck, it was just good to be back at the footy, man. I know you've already been to a game this season, but for me, it was my first time being back at the footy since August. And um, yeah, it's just a really, really um, fun time. Obviously, you know, being able to spend it with you and your mates, but also just, yeah, just the atmosphere of it. Like I like I mentioned, Frio show up and show out, man. Like the crowd was pretty loud, you know. I, we, I was complaining a lot about how they just sort of... Um, uh, you know, it's ball on every tackle or it's fucking uh, a boo every like every five seconds but uh, it's just that's all part of it man that's what I love about being at the footy is just you know the atmosphere of it and I've, I've really fucking missed it man and even just watching it on TV on a Friday Saturday night having a multi all that sort of stuff you know talking footy with the boys I've fucking missed it a lot like I had one of my mates here at TAFE. It was the one that sort of jumped on you at the, on the call about like fucking half an hour ago when we had the fire drill. <laughs> and he um, he's not a big footy guy, but he was in the studio with me and Stu when Stu was doing his first radio show a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it was the Melbourne and Sydney game was playing an opening round. It was the very first game of the season. And fuck, I just, I sat down. I was just like, oh, it's good to have footy back. And that clicked with him. Um, that really like resonated with my mate who's not in the footy at all. And now he sort of, uh, he's never, he's never been big into sport at all. Like he sort of doesn't understand why we all sort of worship sport and are so obsessed with it. But he was just like, fuck, now I get it. This is a constant in your life. And I'm like, yeah, it is a constant in our life. And it is like, it's always something to look forward to. Um, it's been really good to have footy back, man. Um, and of course seeing teams like GWS and I hate to say it, but Carlton, it's exciting seeing different teams up and about, especially ones that have been down for so long, man, because you know, we, we've been there, we know what it's like and it's. It's really cool to see guys like like the teams like Carlton up and about and sort of you know having a bit of bit of success here. It's it's fresh. I feel like the league is uh, it's feeling kind of fresh at the moment. If you know what I mean. It's um granted a lot of changes. A lot of us probably aren't so accepting of. You know I think I think opening round was probably a bit unnecessary now that that's uh, the dust has settled on opening round. I would prefer we just go back to a traditional round one next year. Um, personally, but it's sort of at the same time it was like fuck. It was good to have it back. Good to have it earlier back in the year as well. Um, because it's just going to make for a longer season. And again, just loving it so far, man. Uh, is there any teams uh, other than GWS and Carlton that you think may end up jumping up, um, up jumping up the pecking order this season? Maybe North Melbourne, but not too far up. I don't see them making the eight. I mm. do see them not finishing last, though, which yeah. um, they should be excited about that. Well, um, if you're in the same comp as West Coast, I hope so. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think who else? maybe Essendon, all things being equal, but I'm, I'm not too sure. That, that's, that depends on injuries. That depends on form. That depends on Essendon being Essendon. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? So there's a lot of variables that go into it, man. Like, and it just, it just sort of proves how much harder it is to actually, like, you know, win a flag. Like, you've got to be fucking near perfect to win one. And it's um, a lot of those teams are going to be hungry, especially in the next couple of years, man. I do see Essendon sort of making some leaps and bounds. I think they're going to attempt to... Uh, uh, dismantle this um, whole narrative about them not what's well, not even a narrative it's the facts but you know them not winning a flag uh, not winning a final since 2004 sorry I just think it's going to be um, very interesting times ahead especially for us up top uh, you know I think there's a lot of uh, guys that are a lot of teams that are sort of going to be chasing us down I, I shouldn't even speak like we're on top still like we're fucking 0-2 um, but you know what I mean like you know we've had the sustained success for a little bit now and it's um, there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be hungry to catch teams like you know the Lions uh, the Pies even the Demons man like uh, there's going to be a lot of teams out to out to get us and I welcome that man it makes for an interesting season it makes for a lot of fun and um, of course you just love seeing those clubs that have been sort of down bad for a while just make a statement and you know shoot their way up you know we, yeah. that, we experienced that ourselves in uh, 2019 you know from 16th to 2nd like what a fucking jump that was! I'm hoping to see a lot more from some of those other teams as well. Um, you know, GWS really excite me, and um, I'm I'm glad they made that leap too, and glad that they're sort of continuing their form into it. But how do you think um, the top four may pan out after these two rounds? Like, I understand it's very hard to say at this point in the season, but from what you've seen, um, especially from more so teams that aren't regular top four contenders, like how do you think it's going to pan out? Do you think it's going to be the same old suspects? You know, the the Pies, Lions, D's, and fucking Sydney, or do you think it's going to be something new? This is a very early prediction, it's, by the way. Like you said, like you, like you said, it's fucking hard. Yeah. Um, I still stand by GWS, Carlton, Collingwood, and Brisbane. Yeah. Um, I know Brisbane and Collingwood aren't really traveling too well right now. Um, but I, at, at this point, I still think I'll, I'll stand by that for now. Mm. Might reassess uh, in the future, though. Yeah, I, this will be a topic that we visit. Like, I, I think I might make this like a regular thing at the end of our episodes, just talking a bit of footy. You know, it's just sort of looking at the rest of the league and. 
you know, just giving the other team some of their flowers because I don't think it's something we do enough of. I know this is a Lions podcast, but we're both also, we love the footy. Uh, you and I both watch every single game of every single round. I know you have to, well, you do it out of love, but also because you've got your YouTube channel and you've got the essential round reviews. I'm doing it for the love and the hope of winning a couple of multis here and there, gamble responsibly, by the way. Um, but it's just definitely um, sort of just like a, Something we can definitely do every, every time to just sort of, you know, finish it up and um, be able to, um, I've got people looking at me in the studio here, uh, just be able to finish the, the podcast off on a, like a, a, on a lighter note, especially after a loss like that to Freya. However, um, you know, when we win some big games and, you know, emergency pod sort of levels, I'm sure we'll be able to fucking, we'll be able to talk about our boys all day long. Um, you got anything else for us, Egg, before we get out of here? Because um, I'm sort of, I'm sort of run out of here, eh? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it, man. I don't, I don't want to keep you too long. Um, I think I think we pretty much got the long and short of it. Yeah, man, it's all it's all good. Like it's um sort of just one of those games, man. Like it was it's a, it was a tough loss. Uh, but there are the variables the variables uh that are against us. They're pretty they're pretty obvious, and you know just injuries. Uh, maybe a bit of attitude here and there, but yeah, just a bit of injuries. You know, uh, some some early rust in the season and just um just things not going our way, man. But. Lions fans, don't don't stress, don't burn, burn the barn down, don't start you know throwing monkey shit everywhere. Like we'll be set, we'll be right. Uh, we just got a couple sh- couple things to sort of you know iron out and get through uh, before we really get into the thick of the season here. It's only early days, and be grateful that we're taking these losses now in you know round one and not you know in the middle of August. Like I've been saying since uh, since Sunday, man. If that loss against Fremantle was in the middle of August, I'd be fucking ropeable. But fortunately for us, it's still March, still so much time. It's a long season, and uh, you know once we get guys like Neil. You know, uh, Dude, fuck, even Ashcroft back in, man. Like, we're going to be swimming pretty well, man. It's going to be a good season ahead for us. A lot of exciting stuff. And just remain optimistic. And for the love of God, guys, just to fucking stop abusing the team on the Facebook on the Facebook and Instagram page. Like, it's the club knows where they're going wrong. Just, uh, you know, just ride, ride the ebbs and flows of it, man. It's a long season. Peaks and valleys here and there. But it's, it's not going to be the last time we lose a tough game, man. It's not going to be the last time we're going to be fucking sitting here pretty miserable about a loss. Um, you know, plenty of that to come, but there's also going to be plenty of awesome moments as well for, uh, in store for the Lions this this season. I think um, yeah, that's all I got to really say on that one, man. I just want to you know nip nip the Freo game in the bud. Let's move forward and look forward to Collingwood and you know enjoy this buy that we got coming up, man. Let's enjoy it. Let's watch a bit of footy and fucking just enjoy it, man, because footy's back. Yeah, that's it, man, for sure. That's it. Um, thank you all for tuning in on this episode of the main event. It was a bit of a different one. You know, I, I am here at uh, Boom Radio recording this one. Uh, it is a Tuesday, after all. Like, this is, we'll be going out a bit later than our usual um, schedule, but it is what it is. We'll be back to the regular scheduled programming on Sunday. Um, I assume we'll be sort of getting back to it and, you know, recording our, as we usually do. Um, I, don't, well, I don't think I want to do these studio sessions too often. I mean, and fuck, I had a fire drill in the middle of it and also... Had to go interview uh, Jake Waterman as well, which is a little fun bit, a little fun little bit there. Um, all that on this uh, uh, on this episode, you know, it's a lot of things popping up. So I'm I'm a bit flustered. I'm all over the shop. If you can't tell, it's been one of those days. And um, but hey, man, we got it done. So there you have it. Uh, we'll see you all next week on the main event.